Now, there will be some situations where you can't use the technique of content aware extend. So in this scenario, what I'd like to do is extend this image in, in terms of its width so that I could use this maybe as a, a panoramic style image in a layout. So from here, what I'll need to do is focus on my layers panel. So if I click and hold down the left mouse button on the word layers and drag that across, then all of your JPEG files, all the artwork is stored in one layer. It's called a background. So everything we have is in there, but it's locked. See the padlock symbol here? That means that we can't do what we need to do it, like um, extending the image or transforming it anyway, changing the scale and things. So we'll have to click on the padlock to unlock that. And then it gives us this generic name of layer zero. Well, if you wish to rename that, you can always hover your cursor over there and double left click. And I can call that boats and then hit the return key to change the name. And then from here, well, I want to extend the canvas. So I'm going to go up to the image menu down to canvas size. And then we get this dialog box uh, with some values that may look very similar to the image size dialog box. The main difference with this is that, well, if we need to extend the print area of the artwork and not change the artwork itself, then canvas size is the place to go. It's kind of like having an artist easel on the canvas and realizing you haven't got enough of your canvas to finish painting the rest of a horizon. And it would give you this lovely ability to be able to just increase the canvas, but keep the paint and the original artwork exactly where it is. So my suggestion would be that we just want to extend the image, the print area in here. So I want to extend it on the left edge. So rather than trying to figure out how many extra pixels or how many extra centimeters you wish to change it to, just go to the top and choose percent. And at the moment, the width and height is 100%. Um, of its original size. So if I was to say, go to the width and type in 150, notice that the arrows lower down are now telling me that this is going to increase in some way because the arrows are pointing outwards. Now, I haven't changed the height in here. That's remained the same. Um, but what we're really focused on is the arrows pointing outwards from the center of the image. This is what the anchor is. Essentially, your image is anchored to its center. That was what the black dot is. And the arrows point in the direction that the canvas will be extended. Well, I don't want it to be extended on both the left and the right hand side. I simply want this image to be extended on only its left edge. So if I hover my cursor over, well, in this case, any one of the squares on the right hand side and left click, what this now tells me is that this image is going to be anchored on its far right edge, which will be this area here. And then it's going to extend over from this edge and beyond. So that's what it's going to do. And then with that done, well, I'll go up to the top and click OK. And if I just zoom out a couple of times, there we go. That's how you extend the canvas. Now, you'll notice that, as I mentioned before, the photograph hasn't changed whatsoever. So we need, now need to use the photograph to fill the empty space. So if you ever see this kind of checkerboard pattern, that means transparency. There's no printable content there. So we need to fill that. Now there are good and bad ways to do this, but certainly these days, the best way to do this is to go up to the edit menu at the top of the screen and then go down to an option called content aware scale. And if I click on that, and um, we get what's called a, a transform box that appears around this. Every one of the little handles that appears on the edges or the corners can be grabbed and pulled around to increase or decrease the size of the image. So from here, what I need to do is hover my cursor over the middle left hand handle and drag towards. Now you'll notice that this happens. This is not what we want because it's scaling both the width and the height. Notice that the top here of the image has been extended upwards and down as well as being dragged towards the left hand side. We don't want that. So I'm just going to click on the cancel button inside of there and I'll go back to edit, go down to content aware scale, but this time go to the values for the width and the height up at the top and turn off the link between those. We don't want that turned on. It's a bit of a bugbear with this really. Uh, they shouldn't be linked together because it defeats the object of the, the whole purpose of the tool, really. So from here now, because they're unlinked, I can go to the middle left hand handle and drag and pull this to the left hand side. You'll notice that it doesn't stretch, doesn't distort anything. All that it's doing is 
Photoshop is looking at any section where there is no really discernible content, where there is no contrast around things. So in between those poles coming out of the water, um, it will stretch those regions. So all of these regions here, anywhere where there is something that it can get away with stretching, it will do, but it leaves everything else intact. And if I just take my cursor and if I drag this back towards the right hand side, you see it will collapse those regions like so. So you can do the opposite if you wish to, but it is just a great way of being able to extend an image in any direction that you wish to, to be able to create um, a lengthened uh, canvas. And this does it non-destructively it's called. And when you're happy with that, you can go up to the top and you can click on the tick to apply that setting in there. And that's how you extend an image with content aware scale. Before you close this document down, do of course go and save it as a PSD into the working folder.